From the time that we lived in caves and we were making stone tools to make accessing and eating food a lot easier, that was an expression of, of design. Design is ubiquitous. Design is everything around us. I do believe that design can help make a better world. I know that sounds incredibly grandiose, but I know it from experience of applying design, good design practice, to really, really tough situations. I think what's really important is that designers, they're engaged in a wider discourse about the type of society they want, what are the type of values that they have, because ultimately they're baking those values into their designs whether that's the design of a poster or a magazine or a chair or a table or a public service. When you think about Irish design, we have incredible designers coming out of this country. When you think of architecture, we've got O'Donnell Toomey, who just won the Gold Medal Award earlier this year. You've got Grafton Architects. We've got Cartoon Saloon, Brown Bag in relation to animation. I think our natural ability to understand design and our understanding and love of materials and our understanding of craftsmanship really add itself across the many different disciplines when it comes to design. There's fashion design and graphic design and product design and interiors, but really design comes into everything. I don't care if you're working class or upper class. Design is not something that is culturally distinct on that grounds. Everybody experiences design. <laughs> Most of us have grown up thinking that design was something you did to products. So when we think of design, we think of the iPad. We don't think of design as a problem-solving process that we can use for things other than just products. And of course, in the world we live in today, we see design increasingly being used not just for products and even not just for services, but for business models, for strategies, for organizations, for all kinds of things. I think that's one of the biggest challenges we have in Ireland is to get over the idea of design equals craft. We need to expand the range when we talk about design. We should demystify it. And most of all, we should plug it into other contexts where it has value. It's always design and something. And it's that kind of combination of design plus other disciplines. Um, that's where actual value has been created. Service design is how all the different individual components of a service, the people, the products, the places, the information, come together to create a holistic experience. Um, so in the same way you might design a chair or a table, um, how do you create a service? When you go into McDonald's, it's clearly designed. Somebody's thought about how I queue up, how do I read the menu, how they serve me, how all of those different elements come together to create an experience. How can we create services so good that people want to use them? A lot of times people have to use the services we have here. I think there's real opportunities for design to engage with that. Design is really important in healthcare, how the environment can help to support either the patient to get better or an anxious family or indeed a staff member. When you consider any person's interaction with a hospital, it's quite a scary thing. So you have to put yourself in the position of the person and you have to design the experience for them so that they are put at their ease and that it can be as pleasant as possible. Say, if somebody's going to be checking in to the outpatients department, you'd be looking at the wayfinding, you'd be looking at the letter of appointment that they're going to get, as well as when they come to the building and go up the escalator and access whatever place they're going to. You'll actually consider, when planning the physical environment, you'll consider the whole experience of the person. From the art on the walls down to the light that's coming in, what they hear, what they see, what they even smell, all of the senses can be utilised to actually improve the patient um, and get them better quicker. I 
certainly know from going down to South Kerry, you know, and people say, oh, the drink driving thing, you know, has a large impact on very rural societies. But isn't that a design challenge? Don't we have a lot of buses that run kids to school in the day? What are they doing after school? There's a service design issue there. And we can apply that to all levels of government service, the HSE, education. But it requires government to say, yeah, this is a good idea. I think we should invest in it. If you look up publicjobs.ie and type in the word designer, if you found one design position, I'd be surprised. We need to start getting governments to start hiring designers, you know, because they do bring a different skill set that's got the user in mind, that's got a specific type of training, that's got empathy. Maybe because I'm trained as a designer, it just seems like the most obvious way of actually going about developing policies, but it's not typically how government works. Normally government, if they're devising a policy, they would stay behind closed doors with the teams of experts and not interact with the real world or real people and devise programmes and policies and then push them out into the world and then start to ask questions three or four years later about why is this working and why is that not working. But the design point of view says, well, you actually start from people and you actually go out into the world and understand their daily lived experience. To have an organisation like the Environmental Protection Agency, which is traditionally science-based, regulatory-based, to be thinking actually maybe we could look at how we do things differently and how we can maybe use design to help us do things better, is for me is an excellent you know, it's an excellent opportunity as a design researcher. At the moment I work for the Government Digital Service, we're a, a small organisation within the UK government. Gov.uk is a website which covers all UK citizen interaction with government and we kind of had remit to redesign all aspects of the British government websites. So recently the GDS and Cabinet Office redesigned the registered vote system in the UK and it's been a very big success. There was a big social media push to get people to register to vote online. Hundreds of thousands of people registered on the one day. From working in the Government Digital Service, I've seen the power of design to, to transform public services for the betterment of the UK public. And this is how I see design can trickle down to the people that don't normally discuss design in their usual vocabulary. I guess that's my kind of major issue at the moment with some aspects of design is that it's kind of it's a bit of a middle class discussion where we discuss nice furniture, we discuss nice products, whereas I want to see design as something that can touch every part of the public, whether it's in Ireland or the UK. It's just something that makes their life a bit easier. I want more designers to see the power in that, to see the, the merit in that type of design. Design has very few roots into the wider social, cultural, economic context or political context here in Ireland. And not just that, designers aren't interested in general in Ireland in being part of that. So they're very interested in remaining in kind of a cultural ghetto it's about culture, it's about cultural creation, it's about taste making. I like nice things, but uh, my kid having a nice lamp in their house, um, that fundamentally isn't important. My kid having a, a fucking house, that's important to me, because um, that's our problem where we are right now, right? Where are my kids going to go to school? How are they going to pay for their pension? How are they going to pay for my pension? And they're the things I think we need to be thinking about designing. A lot of what the government are doing, if they brought that particular lens or focus onto a lot of their services, we would have a different output and a different engagement with the public. There's a lot of countries out there that are steering the way and leading the way in this area and I think we need to be watching and learning from what other countries are doing. One of the reasons I started Pivot Dublin back in 2009 was that we were in the middle of a, an economic crisis and it seemed like we were throwing the designers off the lifeboat. We said that 
the World Design Capital bid could be an incredibly useful platform through which we could construct a very powerful story about design in Dublin and in Ireland. And really importantly, we would have to demonstrate why design creates positive change. And I think people were quite taken aback by the sheer quality of the work on show. Even though we didn't get the bid, we thought that the process was hugely valuable in making design visible. We decided to continue with the Pivot Dublin platform to deliver what we had set out to deliver, which was to translate ideas into action through projects. I think there's a very interesting story to be told in Dublin City Council about how we are actually adopting a design-led approach to city development. We'll only really appreciate it in 10 years' time. great to see Government Policy, Enterprise Ireland, the IDA, seeing design service as a, a value to the economy. Now, from our point of view, what do we need to do? We need to actually value that. So there is a body of research to be done there. I think that's really important because that's the first step in moving towards a white paper on design. And these are steps that we need to take. Design is optimistic because it knows that there is a solution, we just have to work through the problem. And it sets out a structured, systematic way of working through that problem. Design is not the be all and end all. I wouldn't be a design evangelist, um, but I think it's just, it can add something to situations to make them better. We often complain about the quality of our services, the quality of our built environment, the quality of the products that we have. If we don't want to be just passive recipients of those things, then we need to be engaged in the design of them. Not as design, I'm a designer, let's all get together and we're going to sketch and show things, but um, design as um, about agency, that I have agency in the world and that I'm able to create and co-create with others, that I'm able to shape the world around me and shape how I want the world to be. For me, that's the value of design. And I think that's particularly important in Irish society at the moment. <laughs>